Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video about GPSs, specifically what to do if you are trying to get yours working and it isn't playing. Now I get lots of messages with the classic, my GPS isn't working and without any more detail, it's really tricky to kind of help those people out. However, there are four or five common gotchas and I tend to cover most of them in the series that I do. So for example, this one, the quadcopter building for beginners series, this was the last one I did where I actually built this specific quad. I actually go through every single step. And if you follow those steps precisely, you'll get to the end and everything will work. But I put GPSs on a lot of my iNav models, whether it's things like this, a quad, or whether it's planes and wings or whatever else. That's because with a GPS, you get lots of advantages. You get detail about things like your height, speed, distance, direction to home, the distance traveled in your on-screen display. Also allows you to have your return to home mode to bring it back to you in the event of a failsafe or just fly it back to you when you are tired. But also you have the options to do things like position hold, it will sit in space and it will do things like fly autonomously too. However, there's a couple of gotchas. So I'm gonna go through in this video and try and cover as many of those, the common ones that I see on a regular basis. And then hopefully by the end of it, if you're having a problem, yours will be working too. I'm just gonna take the battery off here. Big word of warning. If you're ever gonna plug a model in on the bench, I would recommend removing the props. I'm not going to do that for speed for the video. However, don't be an idiot like me, remove your props. So let's plug the flight controller into the computer wait for it to finish booting and then here on the computer what we'll do is we'll click connect and what you'll see here at the top once it get all boots up is the gps is nice and blue that means that it is powered and the system is receiving data if we go in the gps tab then if we go down here we can see that there are packets coming in total messages 189 197 there are no errors and a couple of timeouts this is what you want to see you want to see the total messages going up that means that you have wired it correctly and you also see a very small number of errors now the first problem that I tend to see is the connection is wrong between the GPS and the flight controller. There are four basic wires from the GPS to a flight controller. That is your ground and plus five volts that you'd connect as expected. And then the transmit and receive pins. Those transmit and receive pins are plugged into a spare UART. However, you swap them over. So the transmit pin here on the GPS goes to the receive pin on the UART and vice versa. There then is an additional two wires, SCL and SDA. That's something called I squared C. So a serial data line and a serial clock. And they go to the same. So SDA on the GPS compass unit goes to SDA pad or pin on your flight controller. And the SCL line goes from the compass GPS unit to the flight controller too. But you have to remember to cross over those receive and transmit pins. If you do, then you're gonna be good. That's first of the common issues that you see. The second one is power. Now we're lucky in that with this latest version of the SpeedyB flight controller that I used in this stack, and I picked it very specifically because it does things like this, it's actually powering the GPS. Now my GPS unfortunately is hidden away inside this little box, but on here are two LEDs. There's a power LED and another LED that flashes to indicate that it's sending data. Now, if you haven't got your GPS powered, then it will appear in iNav here at the top, but it'll appear in red. Now that's because these two sensors that are actually on the bottom of this particular quad are only powered when the battery is plugged in. And that is the issue that we've got. So if you ever configure it all up here and you're trying to sort it out on the bench, but your GPS is nice and red, then unfortunately it means that you probably have to supply battery power in order for things to work. Again, word of caution, always make sure that if you're plugging your battery in on your bench, that you remove the props for safety. In terms of the config in iNav, it isn't particularly tricky. What you need to do is go into the ports tab and you need to, for the UART that the GPS is connected to, configure it as a GPS device here in the sensors line and then leave the default speed as 115 200 bits per second. That's the default and it should run fine on that. And you, with that setting, you should also not receive any errors just like we've seen. 
Once you've got that set up and saved and rebooted, then go into the configuration tab, scroll all the way down, and what you need to do is click on GPS for navigation of telemetry. We need to enable this, then save and reboot, and then the GPS icon will appear at the top. If you are playing with a ports tab and you are adding things like the GPS in here, but when you reboot it, everything is reset, you're trying to set an incorrect port configuration. You're probably trying to add two things on one port or one UART, or you're probably trying to get too many things on one place. I would recommend if that's happening, to try and use another UART. That's why I like flight controllers that have lots of spare UARTs, so you can put everything on the flight controller that you want, and you don't have to worry about this. But in the series that we did, I connected the GPS to UART 6, which is why I've configured the GPS on UART 6. But those are the only two things you need to do, ports and configuration, and then iNav will know that it has a GPS and start using it, assuming it's powered. The other thing that can be a bit of a problem is even though we are getting messages, you'll see here in iNav that unfortunately it still hasn't got a 3D lock and that's because we're inside, it can't see the sky. For the GPS to get a lock, it's going to need a pretty clear view of the sky. Modern GPSs are relatively sensitive, they will eventually figure it out, but once they do, then you will get faster locks subsequently. So what's happening here is that if you cannot get the GPS to lock, I would recommend taking it out into the garden with a clear view of the sky and then powering it outside and just leaving it. Now a cold start with a GPS that's never locked before or never got a 3D lock can take quite a few minutes. It can take up to five or six minutes for older GPSs. These newer ones are pretty quick. They'll take maybe 90 seconds but it takes time. What's happening is the GPS is learning about the constellation of satellites that's currently above it in orbit and then triangulating the signals using the clock and then figuring out its position on the Earth's surface. Now that takes a little bit of time. However, once it's figured it out, that information is stored in memory inside the GPS and that memory is backed up by a little power supply. So subsequent boots from your flight controller when you're powering your quad up, the GPS will lock in a handful of seconds because those warm and hot starts, what it's doing is it's just reconfirming that that table it has in memory is still correct. Once it confirms it does, then it says, okay, I'm good, we're ready to fly. So that first lock of the day, a cold start, can take a little bit longer. If it's always taking that amount of time to lock, it probably means that the little power supply that's on the GPS, and that could either be a little button cell or a little capacitor, has probably bit the dust. If that starts to happen here, I tend to remove the GPS and replace it with a more modern, up-to-date one. Last thing that can happen, if you have everything set up, you're getting lots of nice messages in the GPS tab, there's no errors, you give it a clear view of the sky, but it never ever locks up, then that could be due to interference. Now, I've had issues with some HDFPV systems in the old days when they would emit a, enough of a signal in the same band that the GPS is used using to swamp the GPS and stop it getting a lock. These GPSs are listening to incredibly faint signals from satellites that are very, very far away. So it doesn't take much of a signal to swamp the GPS. It's about the 1.2 gigahertz range. There's a couple of actual L1, L2, and there's a couple of other frequencies that yet they use. A lot of the HDFPV stuff that I come across uh, if you get your GPS too close to it, either the air side unit or the camera, you can occasionally get issues. Now, people like Walksnail have brought out their own GPSs. I don't use those. I find that just having a little bit of separation, because I've got my GPS here, that's the avatar unit there. That kind of separation, which is only, what, about four and a half, five centimeters, so a couple of inches, is more than enough to make sure that doesn't happen. The other thing as well is if you have it set up and you're getting lots and lots of errors from your GPS to your flight controller on that GPS tab, I would make sure that the wires that go from the GPS to the flight controller are not running alongside anything that could potentially be introducing errors on that GPS signal that you're getting. 
If you run wires side by side over long distances, then if one wire is carrying lots of high current pulses, it'll introduce a signal into the other wire. If that other wire is the GPS signal cable, then that won't be read properly and you'll start to get, to get those errors. If you see that, stop and just reroute your wires. I tend to try and keep my power and my signal wires physically separate inside the model as well. Trickier to do inside a quad, but very easy to do if you're building something like a wing or a plane. So those are the common things that I see if you can't get your GPS to work inside your iNav vehicle. Again, all of those things are applicable whether we're talking about a quad or a wing or a plane, but hopefully now you've watched the video, you've figured out which part of those is stopping your GPS from working. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payment360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.